what all those red cans are for. Good afternoon. They say an expedition travels on its stomach. These sleds would suggest it travels on gas. Lots of gas. We estimate we'll burn almost 1,500 gallons of gas. Here's John Holmgren trying to come across this little dip. There's a steep little ice wall here. We got to jump. k yeah to start it seemed like we were 120 or oh, yesterday ah uh, somewhere like 80 you know it'd be good Dan to be to watch someone try to get that last hook by the side yeah so Glenn why are you uh, throwing snow on our tent in case the wind comes up it won't blow away Oh, what was that there, Henry? This is the vent. Just get a little fresh air in there so it doesn't get completely steamed up. On. Yeah. Glenn's setting up the cook stove here. I just burnt my hand on this one, Dan. taking soot, mercury, and ion samples from the snow. That means we can't be anywhere near pollution sources, human pollution sources. Um, there are a few scattered cabins in the area, so we've made sure to move several miles away from them and then move well away from any snow machine trails. The next thing we have to do is be careful that we're not the source of contamination. So make sure the wind is blowing right at the cameraman there. That's where we want the cameraman. He wants to be downwind from us. We're going to dig a pit. Glenn, what is Matthew doing now? He's just, he's going to dig another snow pit. And he wants this pit face to be facing away from the sun. You notice the brush I chose 
this is really delicate snow and so I need a brush that's not too stiff. Okay, so what I've done here is I've, I've dug a snow pit that's similar to the one Matthew dug earlier, and but I've, I've dug it away from behind so we can actually see the layering in the snow. The top of the snow pack is about 32 centimeters. Oh yeah. So so you can see these are these are much smaller these surface crystals. They're maybe a hundred times smaller than these big bites. This looks like it got pounded by the wind a little bit. Okay, we're filming. Um, taiga. Taiga, I think it's a Russian word for a type of forest that covers vast areas of the north. Our odometers just clocked over close to 1,200 kilometers, and for the entire 1,200 kilometers, we have been in the taiga. This is the taiga. You might want to pan over there. Little black spruce trees, some bigger white spruce trees, some willows, some alder. But basically, the spruce tree is the hallmark of the taiga. Oh, you don't have a microphone. These guys also tend to burn a lot. In fact, they have to burn in order for their seeds to be dispersed. So you have to, they have a cycle of fire. The snow of the taiga is particularly characteristic. You can kind of see here nice fluffy the one thing you find out in the taiga is you can get stuck real easy look at this there's almost no strength it's really soft real fluffy stuff this snow could have fallen a week ago or a month ago and it'd still be just as fluffy Caribou on the porcupine or on the Lachute River crossing just in front of us. Small group, about 20 past just before. They don't like the ice and they know we're here. We're moving fast.